Hey everyone, I'm Halise, a digital storyteller and video producer. Uh, and I'm Mr. Halise, and I am one with the night. Okay. <laughs> He's one with the night, y'all. Um, Welcome to a very special nighttime episode. Yeah, this is like the first time we're shooting at night, which is really different, but we are. Uh, wait, we didn't finish the intro, did we? Oh, my bad. Dang. I, I derailed you. You did, a little bit. Welcome to the Beast Cast, your favorite aunt and uncle talking about married life and things like such as. Roll that sensual music. <laughs> wow. So, a little this- sexy. So for this Y'all episode, <laughs> this episode is ridiculous. All right. So for this episode of the Beast Cast, we're talking about. Go ahead and say because I don't really know how to. We're talking about a lot. I was oh I wanted to do it like simultaneously. I wanted to see if I could catch you, but anyway. Oh. Fishers and loads. Oh okay sorry fishers and loads yes, uh that's what we're talking about. Oh man, we we wrote some stuff down here and uh oh okay so like so we we tried recording another episode earlier today. We did. The apartment complex is split up into like two sections. Mm-hmm. Our section was fine. The other section had a fire alarm go off. Yeah. Um it was kind of a low drone. So yeah. we thought you couldn't hear it, but we had to take a break cuz things were getting kind of ridiculous and then we checked the audio and you could definitely You could totally hear it. Yeah. So it's like, well, this episode's a wash. By the so- way, it was a terrible yeah, it wasn't thing. a good episode. We were trying to do a very informal, like, Newlyweds not... game. Or just, like, a not deep episode, because the last episode was so deep. Um, but we... I think this was just a good learning experience that we can only do deep episodes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Maybe? it was, like, way too superficial and dumb, and we were poking fun at the, at the questions, because yeah. they were dumb. We just can't do... That's just not who we are. We're not superficial people, which is okay. And y'all deserve better, you know? There's a lightness to that that we don't possess. We're kind of heavy. (laughs) I'm a lot. I'm I'm a... We are. This topic we're about to... Tell me this topic that we're about to talk about isn't heavy. It's heavy. It's it's pretty heavy. I mean, that's why we are doing it in a nighttime setting. Um, Yeah. It's heavy. We're talking about mature content yeah you know y'all put the kids to bed yeah so all right so we got so we went and had let's just give backstory so and that'll help us get into it so we went and had dinner it's saturday night we usually go out and have some kind of nice dinner together and we started talking about our marriage so that's the thing about these beast cast episodes is that the only difference in the conversation is really just that there's a camera there now because we do have a lot of heavy deeper conversations about each other and about our relationship pretty regularly low-key we were kind of spilling tea on other people that we know a little bit not talking i mean we're not like speaking ill but we were just like making observations about other relationships that that we know yeah and comparing ourselves to those relationships and realizing like oh a lot of people on the internet because of the beast cast might think that we have it very together and we don't (laughs) Case in point. Case in point. Here we um, go. So you. Fishers and loads. The <laughs> prognosticator of prognosticator. You knew way back when this house thing first started, you were like, look, there will not be a good ending for this. I did. There, yeah. Very early on to the house shabacle. We will always shabacle. Shabacle. <laughs> it's a snatchy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You were like, there is no winning scenario. Yeah. And I. Took offense to it because I was like, you know, we got to be, we got to be positive about it. We got to be united about this because it's going to be a long period. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think we need to bring negativity into it because there's enough negativity. And you had a valid point. Inherent in it. But as is so often the case, you were right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, there you was, didn't have to throw that. No, no, no. There, there's no malice in that. Like that legitimately you, and this is why I'm like, oh man, it's like you have such good intuition on certain things where Mm. I should just know, I I should just know when you're right. Um, Anyway, you were right. Um, It's, it's a lose, lose situation in this, in this whole thing. Um, But we, I thought that we were going to come out relatively unscathed from it, from the whole experience of 2018. 
a um, couple weeks ago before we moved out or before we got our own place. Mm-hmm. What did you say? I, I remember we were in my parents' house in our little little room. Little nook. In our nook. And I was like, yo, I'm legitimately nervous about moving out and into this apartment. Not because I don't want to move into the apartment. I do. Right. But there was a whole new strain of things that I knew we would have to confront as a married couple that we hadn't had to confront for the year, this past year because I had noticed that with us, with many things like outliers that come into the relationship that we have to deal with, we're very united in that. And we're very stronger together. And we can set aside a lot of things to focus and be united in that struggle together. Mm -hmm. I see it like when we're watching Cedric or just if anything is happening, when we're front facing with my parents or your parents or family or Or anything like that. Most topics. Yeah, we're very like, united and even if there is a rift between us about the top topic front facing we will be united and then privately we'll discuss it and figure it out right and so i knew that like oh man we aren't gonna have the united issue anymore with things because we will not be solely united on the house right now we're gonna have to look at yeah go ahead oh no i'm sorry i was taking over well no like now we're gonna have to look at each other We're going to have to see each other as individuals again to a certain degree and like deal with those conflicting things that we have as individuals. Because the marriage took the strain of the housing situation, right? Mm -hmm. And so the big systems, like the big overarching um, structure was fine, Yeah. right? But there were micro... And micro pe- fractures and people were all like also very remember all the times we because we did seek out external help we saw we both saw therapists on our own i don't know if you're okay with mentioning um, that. that's fine i mean they they were not good right well we both Mine saw, wasn't good. we both sought out therapy on our own and then we both like went to um went to a, a pastor of the church a, yeah a priest to see seek therapy as well together and each of them were always like wow y'all are so united <laughs> I'm so glad that you all like are like have sunken into each other. Yeah. And we were like, what you think we finna do? Like trying to leave the other person isn't going to help this situation at all. Right. She's the only other person in my corner. Like am yeah. I going to alienate her? No. No. It doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, now that we like, we're still going through it. It's wrapping up kind of. But yeah, now that we're back in our own life. We're having to deal with our own things that were still relevant a year ago, but we just didn't deal with them because we didn't need to, or like things, other things took precedent for sure. Right. So we were, we were focused on the house. Yeah. Right. Um, so we were, we looked at that situation, looked at our lives, like did the whole introspection thing. Like we're handling it. Yeah. It's messy, but we're handling it. Yeah. 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 You're not looking at it closely enough where you could see the little micro fractures. Right. And you're like, oh, there's stuff there that needs to be addressed. But as a whole, we're holding. So yeah. that's all well and good. So I naively thought, no, when you brought up that concern, I was like, no, 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 we'll be like, of course, we'll be fine. I mean, we've been we made it through six, seven years before this whole shabacle. <laughs> shabacle. Um, and we'll be fine afterwards. I mean, if we can handle this and like some stupid little thing comes about and like ruins us, then <laughs> I just thought that'd be so cosmically funny. Yeah, you were um, just like, because we did have a bit of a tiff when we moved in here. Right before we left, right? Yeah, and you were like, this can't be the thing that breaks us. We survived 2018. <laughs> yeah, it's like surviving a gunshot blast <laughs> to the chest only to die from like an infection from like an ant bite or something i don't know splinter yeah so you were like no (laughs) this can't be the thing that ruins yes um but it's so funny there have been there have been microaggressions and it's not i'm not pointing fingers and i mean i'm owning up to it too but i mean there's been some bickering between us um, which i didn't realize that we had early on in the marriage but you we definitely did. Yeah, you brought it back up again. Yeah. We would bicker a lot when we first got married. And it was and we would bicker in front of people too. 
Like I remember distinct moments of like us bickering in front of my parents, like mm. when we would come down to here to San Antonio when we lived in Austin, or bickering in front of my sister. She wasn't with Alex yet. Um, and just in general, I think I even remember when I was, so my first job was with this boutique production company and I had an intern under me, Grace, um, who y'all probably know from Naturally Curly. <laughs> and she, she was so young. She was a freshman in college at the time. And you and I had maybe been married for not very long, a couple months, mm. maybe six months. And she somehow like learned that I was married and of course was like, oh, you're married so young. How did that happen? I was like, and I immediate response is like, don't get married. It's so terrible. <laughs> it's so terrible. It's so hard. Uh. <laughs> and I mean, the first year was hard, right? It was very that's, hard. That's a potential future topic. Yeah, I think um, we have that on the list for do. sure. But I guess... We were just talking about, so again, we were talking and comparing ourselves to other couples, as couples are wont to do. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's a good gauge to know, like, what you're... How do we measure up? How do, well, not even that you measure up, but just, like, what are you willing to tolerate in a person and what are you not? Because mm. everyone's threshold of what they tolerate is completely different, you know? True. Well, yeah, and, and each couple is going to be, like, it's it's its own microcosm. You're right. So, totally. Totally. Um, but... The thing with me was was bickering, right? Because you'll hear cup, other couples on podcasts. Um, you'll hear, you I mean you'll just know other people, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. And you can hear them, you know, just jabbing at each other, like just going to town, just yeah, st stabbing, and it's like that motion is so like it's a stabbing motion. It's just like so natural to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it just sounds because they're at ends with each other at that moment. You just hear like, man, there's so much tension. Like, how can they get through that? Mm hmm. Um, and it almost sounds like bickering is the beginning of the end almost like when it's that when it comes that naturally between two people especially in front of other people right where you're just like y'all know I'm here right and it's like oh there's no I like, don't need to see that <laughs> strain <laughs> yeah like the shame the shame filter the shame veil it's gone it's like not even the, it's yeah. trampled on the floor like 300 feet away yeah 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 oh, okay all right <laughs> <laughs> okay all right all right. okay all right let me just turn off your mic okay hey everyone thank you so much for listening to this late night episode of the beast cast of the beast cast even though the episode itself will air at a normal time um but thanks for being here thanks for being here if you're new here like share subscribe to the channel if you're mm. watching us on youtube because it really helps also check out the ads and let them play <laughs> If you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, let the ads play because that helps us out just a little bit. At least how else can people help um, support the Beast Cast? Oh, thank you for that question, Mr. Hollies. Oh. The way you can do that is by checking us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash There you can give as much or as little as your heart desires. You can set a monthly max for yourself. And that goes to helping us keep the Beast Cast going. Um, if you're listening to us wherever you get your podcast from, rate us on that forum. Medium. Medium. There you go. That's a good word. Rate us on that medium, and that will help us a lot too. Um, also, the Beast Cast does have an Instagram that Mr. Hullies haphazardly manages. Um, I'm send trying. us. <laughs> I'm trying, y'all. <laughs> send us. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I fall, just like in relationships. Wow! Send us a voicemail, <laughs> or just check us check us out on Instagram. What do you call that? Like, in, it's not an instant message. It's a. Uh, it's just a voice message. Um, if you're listening to us on Anchor, you can leave us a voicemail on Anchor as well. And I think that's everything. Yeah, y'all mm -hmm. are an integral part of actually us choosing topics. Yes. For these things, so you really are. We yeah. appreciate it. We appreciate you being here. And uh, back to the podcast. And that's interesting. But now we're bickering now. But And I don't think that we're near the beginning of the end. It's just, I honestly feel, and like I said over dinner. This is late night. Just so y'all know, it's late night. Mr. Hollis was like, we can do this podcast episode, but I need muffins. And I was like, okay, I'll set up. Like, I need muffins. <laughs> I'll set up.
while you make muffins. <laughs> and he did. They look really good though. They're gluten free. Just like Tito's handmade vodka. Wow. Handmade in Austin, Texas. Naturally gluten free. <laughs> you need you need to stop shouting out companies so we can get sponsored. <laughs> like stop. <laughs> oh, the first taste is always free. Wow. Except for the muffins. These these cost money. All right. Um, what were you sorry, saying? we got three minutes. Um, you see, you said that bickering seems like it's the end. Or the beginning of the or end. Or the beginning of the end. Bah, 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 bah. I also, I wonder if... Oh, totally lost my train of thought, sorry. Bickering sometimes will seem like the beginning of the end for a couple, but I think the reality is, is that no couple is actually stable. There is always the possibility um, of mm. things breaking down and falling apart. You know, yeah. I mean, what did, what did we say? Like, there's always like a marriage is always going to be built out of like a like out of a stack of hay. Like, it's always going to be built out of something unstable. It's very fragile. No matter how solid it appears on the outside, the base can always be like plucked apart so very easily. Definitely. And then yeah. the analogy that I used at dinner was, you know, you can have this gigantic castle. Um, and then comparatively, you only have like a five foot tall stone or diameter stone. And it's like, yeah, it, it doesn't really measure up, right? Mm -hmm. But if that stone is infidelity and I toss it at the castle going, you know, 150, 200 miles an hour, we're going to have problems. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. So there's, yeah, I mean, there's always the possibility. You have to pay attention and give the relationship time to be stable. Oh, that's what it was. And I think we only have like a minute left on that timer. But um, I feel like we're we're newlyweds almost again mm. after the house because, and your point was, you know, the marriage is always shifting when people ask about getting bored. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I feel like after the house, like it was such a major, Lord, it was a major time, like a it was a terrible time in our lives, but it, it was so life altering that like we changed. And so mm -hmm. we get like our normal was living with other people, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our normal was having to cope any way that we could, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, finding any solace, developing new, new behaviors for a year. That's learned behavior. Yeah. Like that's borderline part of who you are now. Yeah. Um, and so now when all we have to confront is each other now, we have to grow again. And yeah. that's that sucks, but I honestly like who I'm encountering. Oh. Yeah. I mean I I love you. It's just the pain there's gonna be growing pains, but I love you anyway. Mm. Timer. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting all sorts of artsy with it. Should I turn the camera off? No, no, no. Really? <laughs> He's sprinkling sugar on the muffins, y'all. Three, two, one. Hey, everyone, and we're back. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's some, that brings up a good point. Something that I feel like a lot of people asked very early on in the Beast cast with episodes was, you know, boredom. I think that was like a whole situation. So many people asked us to cover boredom within marriage and I couldn't quite be, have being someone who's been married for a while it's like I couldn't understand that because it was hard for me to get back into that mindset of just like what single people don't realize about marrying somebody which is that you are not married to the same person indefinitely once you say I do you know there's the person you marry when you first get married or the person you dated that you think you're marrying and then in a few years, like Which Matt, think you're sorry, I mean, not in, no, I, you're, you're right. It's not a negative way, but just like, and then in like two, three years, you change again. You know, you as a person change and the person you've married changes as well. So you're not bored <laughs> because it's learning to love that person mm -hmm. at each transition and stage of their life. Mm. Yeah. Cause there were times when I was definitely transitioning as a person and you loved me through that, you know? Wow, that's deep. You did. That's deep, yo. <laughs> I mean, you did. <coughs> Especially since we did get married relatively young, you know? Like, I mean, I married you when I was 21. 
Think about no, that. No, you were 19. No, I we met you met, when you were 19. Yeah, we met when I was 19. We were married by the time I was 21. Think about, like, yeah, 21. think about what it means to be 21, y'all. Yeah. Like. Do stupid 21. stuff. 21. <laughs> you know? Um, for 21, I was pretty mature or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but I was still yeah. 21, you know? And then by the time I was 23, I was not the same person. That's true. You know? That's by the, true. Yeah. By the time I was 25, I'm different again. And now, as someone who's gone through what we went through last year and hitting, hitting up 29 this year, I'm different again, you know? And same with you. So... It never gets old, y'all. <laughs> There's always something. <laughs> I mean, there are there are couples that we know that we question. Um, ooh, I'm speaking in front of the mic. Um, there's couples that we know that we question. Um, sorry, you had a really good point. That was it. Um, are they, are they actually gonna last? I question that with everyone I meet, though, because again, I'm I'm realizing as we stay married longer too, and as we continually work through things, hmm. like nobody is. I don't actually think there's any couple that I can say like for certain, oh, they're never going to break up. I think it's always about pressure points. Like everyone has theirs and you never know. You, you really don't know what's happening with people within their own relationship together. Like if my parents came to me like tomorrow and were like, oh, we're getting a divorce because of X, Y, and Z, I'd be like, oh, okay. Because I don't know. Like, I don't know what their life is, you know? Right. Especially if, like, a couple has been together that long. And so it's like, oh, dang, yeah, this probably was something that, like, really ate at you for a long time. And you were trying to love them through that thing. And you can't love them through that thing. And it took you this long to realize you couldn't love them through that thing. You know? Huh. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know. I don't know if this is a natural extension of this conversation, but... I guess divorce is a natural outcome of relationships, of marriage. Of some really, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, and, and people shouldn't, I, th I think we did like a... We mentioned it, I think, in, in another podcast, podcast episode of like, people who get divorced aren't like You're giving not up. broken or, or flawed, right? Yeah. It's just like, this ain't easy. <laughs> well, the relationship isn't easy. And then also, to your point, you can either grow... Like in parallel, you can grow into or you can grow out of. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's Definitely. a thing. Definitely. So it's not like you did wrong. The point is that we're. I mean, what is that's a good here's what may what is there is no such thing as a sustainable marriage. I don't think. Yeah, you mentioned that at dinner, and I. There is no such thing as a sustainable marriage. What do you mean? Because just to sustain is to keep going. Mm. Okay. Well, like, I just don't think there is a... That's the wrong word then. It's like there's no stable marriage. That's better. Yes. There's no such thing as a stable marriage. Yeah. Some people just look better yeah, some in people, front of other people. Yeah. yeah. Some people are better about having a united front in front of people. Maybe. Yeah. But then... They come back to their space and there's stuff they still have to work out together. Just like the rest of y'all. Um, I mean, we're just, we're two different organisms trying to make it work. And it's like two different organisms come together in like a bigger cell and they can kill the cell or they can like coexist and propagate. Mm. I think it's more, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a point. No. So, mm, mm -hmm. You and that's stupid pseudoscience <laughs> analogies no i think it's more just like because i see there's comments i'll see like one of them is a patreon producer uh aniola i think is her i think that's how you say your name if i'm saying it wrong i'm sorry but i'll see her like a comment she'll have is like i'll watch these beast cast episodes and i think man i'm single maybe i should just stay single <laughs> and if that's what you want to do that's fine true but it's also like relationships there should be a level of friction. Like, it should be uncomfortable at times because the whole point of being in a relationship is to be with someone that makes you a better version of yourself, hopefully, right? And in order for that to happen, there will be friction. There also, has to be friction. 
So then how do you know when to leave the relationship? Because yeah. we talked about that before where it's like, oh, you know, what's a bad relationship or something? I mean, abuse is the main thing that comes to okay, mind. Yes. <laughs> no one should be abusing you verbally or physically. And like, or, seriously, that's not a joke. Like yeah, nobody, nobody, nobody should, should be, be doing that. Yeah, that's not okay in any relationship. That's not something that you deserve. Right. But apart from that, I don't know, man. It's kind of a guessing game. But yeah, that's, that's why relationships are complicated because right. there's no, between you and I, it's going to be different than anybody else that we know. Right, totally. So <sighs> as far as giving people a sign, like, oh, maybe you should, maybe things to think about when in regards to like, oh, am I with the right person? Right. Um, I don't know, man. I got nothing. What's right for you now maybe may not be may right, not for, be you right for you in a couple of weeks or months. Yeah, you really don't know. I know for me, I guess, so this is going to sound super analytical and y'all can roast me because I remember when I told you about this, you roasted me. Um, <laughs> but I remember when I was getting ready to, we were, it was before we were engaged, before we got engaged, but I hadn't left for LA yet. I made a pros and cons list about staying that. with you. <laughs> I made a pros and cons list. I didn't tell you about it till after, like way after, like a few months after. Yeah. But I made a pros and cons list about all the pros of stay being with you and all the cons of being with you. And literally, like logically, and this is like me being on my best, if you believe in the horoscopes and stuff, me being on my best Virgo grind, I was very logical about it. And the pros outweighed the cons like a lot. I was very logical about this irrational <laughs> astrological thing. I'm sorry. That's rude. Well, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> but the pros, my pros list was like super long and my cons list was super short. Hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'll stay with him. And then you ended up proposing to me like a month or two later, so... Life's funny sometimes. <laughs> so, I'm I just mean, telling you what it did. <laughs> the other thing that I'm, and I'm just like throwing stuff out there. Um, I don't know if this is going to be part of the episode, but um, like, yeah, yeah. Are there actual like warning signs for divorce? And I guess for relationship counselors or psychologists or psychiatrists, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that there definitely are. It's like, oh. Yeah, you, they probably well, have. They have, probably have it textbooked, right? Right. Well, I mean, it's it's part of their clinical background. They're just like, yeah. I mean, if you don't fix this, then this can lead. This will probably lead to, to divorce. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I don't know. I mean, it, it still bothers me when I hear other couples argue, and I don't know quite why that is. Just because it's it's just friction and tension. Well, it's friction and tension that. Like, you're not in their relationship. So you don't need to see it. Or you don't need to be privy to it, I guess. Yeah, and the fact that they're, if they're that willing, like, if they don't care who's watching in that private moment, because those should be private moments, mm -hmm. then it's like, y'all... If y'all are willing to say this in front of me right. to each other, what are you willing to say to each other when, when no, no one's around? Exactly. How, how much are you willing to hurt each other? with words when no one's around and that's like dang you know man i really wonder that's something that I, I i don't really think about it but i'm wondering now like what is the point where you you just feel like man spending the rest of my life with you sounds like a sentence than mm. yeah than something that i want where it sounds more like yeah, like labor. Yeah. Because, I mean, to me, I've never felt, even in our worst, I haven't felt that way before. That's interesting. So in past relationships, I would question, like, is, oh, man, what's the question that I would ask myself? It's like, does this, per oh, yeah, yeah, weird. So it's like, does this person make me happy? Mm. Like, am, am I... Am I happy with this person? Like, it, it would just get to a point where I would think, am I actually happy with this person? Mm -hmm. You know? And then 
there would be a period of like digesting that and then the answer would be no i'm not happy and then you would leave or or they would leave yeah, or someone I mean, would, would leave yeah <laughs> but i've never found myself questioning that with you oh. like i think i have hypothetically like thrown the question out there mm -hmm. like spaghetti throwing against the wall just to see if it would stick and it's like no it's like it doesn't there's like two halves of my mind and one of them like proposes that question mm -hmm. and then the other half is like that's that's not even a question and just like throws it away i mean i think that's a valid question to ask regardless how of how long you've been with someone or like what you've built with them or anything like that because yeah, if there if the question gives you pause, then it is kind of like, yeah, we gave you pause, you know. There's a thought there. There's something there that's worth entertaining. It's almost like the idea of like you're, and this maybe might be too deep or too like, with people, but your walk with God, you know. Um, questions about your faith. And whatnot. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tangent, but yeah, you you need to question it. Like, there's there's a healthy questioning mm -hmm. to. I mean, you're you're kicking the tires on on the car, right? Or you're checking the brickwork of the wall. Uh, I don't want to say that. Um, or you're checking to see how well constructed something is. Mm -hmm. um, just because you're looking for cracks, doesn't mean like you're going to scrap the whole project right mm -hmm. um it just means that you're just oh man like you need to question in order to to build because if you just accept blindly then that's i don't know like that's that's not true devotion Ooh. whether that's religion if you ascribe to a higher power or to the church post the person that you've chosen to be with for the rest of your life mm. um like it's okay to question like man we're arguing a lot like are we okay or it's like oh well if you automatically insert that chisel into the relationship then no we're not going to be okay and it's like no you're just you're questioning are we okay yes okay so is it something that i'm doing wrong i think so okay are you doing anything about it <laughs> No, I'm waiting for her to make the first move. Mm. I'm not going to lie to you, homie. That, that sounds dumb. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. That may not be the right move. You know what? But it's going to be the move that I make. All right. Well, I'm going to sit over there and eat some popcorn. <laughs> you let me know how this goes. I'll watch this happen. Yeah. Um, I'll watch this play out. <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah. I guess the major thing I want to say is that no one has it together at all there are different variations of struggle struggle what did i say no it was shabakle shabakle you it's, could say you could say struggle too struggle there's different variations of it's struggle like shrug hug struggle <laughs> yeah. yeah sure there's different variations of struggle that we both that we both go through and that everyone in relationships go through and no one's got it all figured out because like I guess unless you've been married multiple times. But even then, it's going to be with a new person, so it's a new thing. So, you know? I don't know, man. I mean, marriage and divorce just seem so final. You know? As they should be, I suppose. Yeah, well, I mean, you can always remarry to the other person. Like, the fact that you and I are in a marriage doesn't mean anything. Like, we could both live in other apartments. True. Yeah. In, like, five minutes. Mm -hmm. right but there's a level of income that has to come with that but sure well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um well it's just like this mindset that you're both committed to um and it's just interesting with divorce it's just like there's is it that there's no love in the relationship i don't think so I think there's definitely still love i look at like well i mean depending on the relationship no? well yeah depending on depending on uh, this is all individual based on each person, but I look at, I'll have to like bleep this out, but like, for example, her first husband, mm -hmm. she cared for him until he died. Yeah. They weren't married anymore. 
Oh, that's right. Well, that, I mean, it again, it depends on the relationship. Mm-hmm. Because and I, it wasn't that she didn't love him; it was just that like they'd grown, they grew into separate people. Well, so like if you grew grow into separate people, then it's like is the way that I care for you still love, or is it just like friendship? Is it just mm. is it not even something that we can label? Is it just a thing? It's like I care for you as a human being, but I want to sleep in that bed with you. You farting it up. <laughs> you take those ice cold feet and you jab them into my midsection. Oh, that feels night. that feels like a jab at me. Oh no, that wasn't a jab at you. It's just like I'm just thinking, like you know, you you kick me in the middle of the night, or yeah, you bring crumbs into the bed with all those dang animal crackers that you eat. That's a good point. Well, so actually, that's what is uh what did come in full circle? What was it episode three, episode four? We talked about Will and Jada. All uh, right. If you ask that, that long ago? Yeah. It's been a while. We're on wow, episode man. like 17 or something yeah, right now. Fun. Wow. 2018 seems so far away. Ooh, right? Thank God. It um, it's because we're such different people now. <laughs> um, who is it? She, if you, Jada, I think she just had a post recently where she talks, or she talked about how, again, when she stopped labeling her marriage as a marriage and started, I think she started calling it a like. Squiggle butt. No, she started calling it like a lifetime friendship or something like that. But like, I remember she doesn't call her marriage a marriage anymore. She calls it like a lifetime friendship or something like that. And in the context of everything we've gone through, I can understand why she has to make that distinction for herself. Because if she calls it a marriage, then she's going to bring into it all of the baggage that comes with what you define a marriage to be. And that might not actually be her reality of happiness, of like what she defines happiness by. That almost sounds like she's trying to reprogram her brain, though. I'm still recording, right? Yeah. Or it's like, man, I'm being forced to drink cough syrup, and this tastes terrible. Um, I'm just going to imagine like I'm drinking a smoothie. It's a fruit smoothie, and that's just what I'm drinking. I'm drinking a fruit smoothie now. But you had mentioned that too, though. You had said something about... What is it? We put something about that. But see, so that's the thing. You're you're like dragging her right now, right? Semi? Well, I mean, I'm just I'm dragging I mean if I'm I'm not trying to drag her, but I'm I'm just saying like the way that she's like remapped her mind to think about marriage, it's just kind of like Yeah, I don't want to think about all the weight that comes with the relationship. I'm just trying to think of like me being in a whatever sort of partnership with this other person. But then, so my same thing is like when we went to dinner or something you mentioned that I was like, oh, that's interesting. Marriage is learning to live with a, at a deficit. Oh, right. You did say that. I did. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, and it's not necessarily deficit. It's just, it's learning to live. Man, what did I mean by that? It's like me trying to grab something at the end of the table with two, like, two wooden hands, Right. It was like, I still have my, my normal hands. Or it's like a doctor doing robotic surgery, right? Or it's like, you know, I, I know how to cut and I know how to do these actions inside the human body, but I'm doing it from like one step away, you know? Mm-hmm. And so being in a marriage is, is similar to that because it's like a lot of the stuff that you know how to do on your own is easy. But when you're thinking about somebody else and there's like a partial level of detachment where... You're like, oh, well, before I act, I need to think about this other person. Mm. Or like, how how is this action going to affect them? So I can't just decide that I'm going to go out with my buddies and, and drink up a storm or just pretend like I don't have responsibilities or whatever. Um, you can, but I mean, if you do that often enough, then obviously it starts impacting the other person. And so they just bring like, hey, so what's, what's going on? Like, what, what's going on? And you're like, no, man, you're always writing me about... I'm just trying to be with my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not it's not a deficit. It's just learning to live. I mean, yeah, no, I, I would say deficit because there's there's a part of you that is now missing mm-hmm. because you've made room in your like soul or your emotions. You've made room for another person, so now it's. There's going to be somebody else that you're bringing with you. So maybe it's not coping with the deficit, but it's coping with an additional um, 
load. I would say load. Ah. Um, Fishers and loads. Wait, did we say loads? Oh man, that's so funny. <laughs> Full circle. Well, no. So it's it's yeah. You are living with that with that other load. I mean, it's just something else that you need to carry. Mm. And it's like, well, you know, I could go and do my own thing, but you know, is this other is this other half gonna gonna be okay with it? But so, like from that sound, like from that perspective, marriage does not sound good. <laughs> It's not a choice that everyone wants to make. Ah, <laughs> okay. All right. Just be, I mean, just because romantic movies and popular culture make it seem like the natural course of everybody's life, similar to college, mm. is a or relationship. similar to kids. Or similar to kids, right. Yeah. Um, so, oh, I'm supposed to fall into a relationship, mm. and I haven't fallen into one yet, and so I feel a certain type of way. Like, I feel like I'm less than, than other people. And it's like, no, that's not true because marriage is complicated. Marriage is hard. Um, Marriage is work. And so if you just haven't found the right person who can make all of that work, then that's, those are just the cards that you drew. And it's like, man, I couldn't win this hand. Let me try another hand. Let me wait for the dealer. You know? Yeah, that's good. I like that. I'll take that. I don't know. We were just we were just talking about other people, and then just realized that oh lord, we we did have some issues that we're trying to work through. We're definitely not any better than anyone. We're definitely not. No, I don't know if we ever made that case. But oh, we didn't. But I'm if just, we did, I'm, just I'm saying sorry. That, I'm saying that out loud for everyone else. We're definitely not better than anyone. No, <laughs> we are stumbling through it. Just like the rest of y'all. I mean, you're stumbling. I'm already like face down on the floor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like it almost feels like I'm sleeping, so I'm just lying there. <laughs> like in the mud? Is there mud there? I feel like there's mud there. Wait, oh, there's mud? Yeah. It's mud, but then it's also kind of like, did, did a dog just take like really loose stool? Oh, it's fine. It's still warm. I'm just going <laughs> to lie in it. Kind of poke, oop, kind of poke a nostril out. Um, <laughs> There's no real way to tell. Any, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead and complete that. Well, there's no real way to tell who's actually stable and who's going to last and who isn't. Anything is possible. Ooh. With anyone. There ain't no groundhog. There's no groundhog. No, not at all. Everybody is born, right? Everybody comes through sin, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody dies. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's inevitable is death and taxes and people struggling. So the struggle is either alone or it's with somebody else. Ah, um, so okay. There ain't no perfect relationship. There ain't no perfect marriage. There's no marriage where there's not conflict. Like there's always going to be some form of conflict. Some people are just better at hiding it. Yeah. Um, but hopefully you have a somewhat stable relationship or foundation of love. Some trust and a little bit of hay. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye.